Welcome, Bert. So my name is uh, Bert van Aken. I'm, um, I'm actually originally a graphic designer. Um, I um, started doing new media design and with that, um, websites, web shops, uh, communication, things like that, um, and moved into IoT because we wanted to matter a bit more. Um, a website itself is good, it's for marketing, it's great, but after the product is gone, then uh, the, the, it's communication. Um, we really wanted to go into uh, process optimization and we, because we were app builders as well, uh, we got often we got requests as in can you do this for our process and that and that and, and um, we saw that many questions actually had a similar philosophy underneath it and that's how we built this um, WMW this, this sort of a framework to answer to similar questions um, as in for example I'm sending out an alert or I want to see this sort of data or I want to have that type of report uh, which goes across various markets but the ID behind it is the same um, so we, um, about seven years ago, we um, started with the concept. We started building on, on this as well. I'll explain in a minute uh, how we did this. Um, and uh, we're being taken all uh, to the market all over the world by uh, partners and resellers. Great. And um, you know, I, I like how you kind of describe yourself. It's kind of internet of everything. Um, mm. So it's way beyond internet of things. It's, you think much more holistically. Um, so maybe that's a kind of good way to ask you um, kind of what what does the Internet of Things mean to you? Ooh, Internet of Things. Um, I'll, I'll answer it in a, in a little bit of a different way. Um, nobody really earns any money with Internet of Things. You save money. So the only thing parking, maybe that could be a good business model that can that way you can earn money with Internet of Things. But usually you save money. You can optimize something. You can you can I don't know change your process. Um, uh, we have um, uh, devices or installations that uh, when they need to be fired up, nobody needs to go there anymore and press a button. Um, you obviously have your readings. You can have um, direct but also indirect uh, process optimization, and this really goes over well every market uh, uh, and every problem as well. Um, obviously, there needs to be a problem. Uh, there's, there's, um, um, actually, just this morning, I was in a call where somebody wanted to do Internet of Things because it was hot. It was a hot topic. That's marketing. <laughs> Don't do it for that. Uh, I mean, if, if you're not really helping somebody or solving anybody's problem and, and making sure that they really benefit from this, then don't do it. So Internet of Everything is problems everywhere. Okay, nice. And then... Also, I think from your unique perspective, you also talk about the fact that you that, that your company, so that's WMW, is actually more about a framework and it's more about new ways of working. Um, yeah. Just if we then talk about the ecosystem, like the IoT e ecosystem from your perspective, how, what do you see? What do you see being the key kind of pieces and components that you're oh. working with? Well, um, the, the philosophy of WMW is actually, uh, WMW stands for where's my whatever, because we can connect anything anywhere. Um, but um, the philosophy behind it is, and this really, again, from the design perspective, and the entire company is like that. Um, I never had to design a logo three times. Uh, if there's three coffee shops that need to have a logo, for example, they have a different logo, they have a different background, different, different uh, strategy, different uh, things they want to do. So you have to be able to adapt to that end user or to the purpose or the solution to the problem. Um, so instead of making a modular system, the modular is a limitation. Uh, um, you can do, I, I know in, in business perspective, uh, modularity is very good because you can scale. Still, I, we wanted to do something else with the same outcome, but more flexibility. So that's what, what we call this framework, um, where we, we can build something 10 times faster so that we are, we're a uh, uh, Western European company uh, with Western European prices. We have to obviously uh, stand up against the rest of the world. And we can, because of this framework, we can develop extremely fast and we can adapt. Now, um, um, very, very important not to ever make a device. Um, I have many colleague companies that make their own device. Don't, don't do it because at some point you'll be selling second best to your customer. Again, you're not helping solve the problem. You're helping solve it second best. So the ecosystem is extremely important. We need to know everybody in that ecosystem uh, because you will have experts everywhere. 
will be the expert on our turf and then we should be surrounded or, or need to find uh, uh, um, all the experts in all the other uh, uh, domains in connectivity in uh, devices uh, for example uh, but also in processes um, we go to a certain extent but the really really advanced analytics and and the uh, machine learning and ai we have i mean we've made 108 applications already even in one single application for example um, uh, waste management artificial intelligence in waste management is a business on its own how could we do that in 108 so let's not do it let's try and find somebody and and, and work together with again that ecosystem of, uh, of partners it's really really important to have a well to have an ecosystem of experts okay and i think um it's it's a really important point to stress um that the ecosystem is critical and everyone is reliant on everybody else um so if we then talk more about the kind of skills and approach that you have as a business so collaboration is is a big part of the puzzle in order to work with partners and continuously be up to date. But what kind of um, and maybe also because you're you're coming from a graphics design background rather than an engineering background, which the majority of people I'm speaking about. What kind of skills and approach do you think you need to succeed in this ecosystem um, and to get the best out of the ecosystem um, given its maturity today? From our perspective or from the ecosystem perspective? From your perspective. So from, from our perspective, um, we, um, so, so as soon as data has been generated by a device and transported by a network, um, it arrives at our endpoint. This is where we start. So we start if data is, is arriving, uh, normalizing it, um, uh, storing it, um, uh, running it through a rules engine and, and, and notifications and things like, like that. Um, so we're a platform, if you like. Um, being independent, very important. Uh, so we can run on any hosting anywhere. Uh, we can go on-premise, in cloud, uh, virtual cloud, everything there. Um, into then the application part where to consume that data. So who needs to see what? Huh? What user? Uh, because you have different sort of users, even within one organization, like a hospital, for example, or, or that's, that's a, a good example is the airport. There's business uh, analytic, uh, analytics in the airport that, um, that are looking at uh, BI tools, for example. But the cleaning lady is also consuming the data. She needs to know when to go and do this or somebody else, a service technician. And, and so from that, that's what we do. Now, um, what skills do we need? Well, we need to have pragmatic people that can understand a problem, that can talk to customers, that can and, and not customers, to and to the reseller and help the reseller um, identify the situation and so that they so that they deliver the very best solution and that we help in that. Um, the second thing, obviously, is of course it's DevOps, it's uh, architecture, it's uh, server uh, scaling, scalability, security, very important, uh, especially with our latest uh, product for for COVID nineteen, GDPR, uh, people uh, tracking, um, uh, extremely extremely important. Also, legislation is very different in South Africa than it is in the US, than it is in Singapore, um, um, and then. Um, well, then good developers. <laughs> we need to have good developers that can because we're possibly the most flexible platform out there. The, the developers that, I, that are in my team had a very hard time with me because I'm the one changing on the first say, sorry, no, uh, I know that this is what, what we thought, but the customer actually wants that because we got to learn and, and learn about, and we have to be able to adapt. So it was very tricky for them, but that's how we came to make this framework. Now we can do that. Everybody is on the same DNA and everybody is from the, looking from the same perspective in this sort of flexibility and enterprise level development. Great. And I think it's such an interesting um, perspective. So a lot of people at the moment are pushing out their, their solution rather than taking the time and um, getting that deep, deep understanding of the problem and the need and then making sure that the solution is the right one. Well, that's it. I, I would like to argue that lots of people are pushing out their product and not the solution. Yeah. They're, they're, they, they have identified beforehand what, what, the, what the solution should be to a certain problem. But every day, and this is when we were designing as well, every day we see customers have requests and they have a different way of working. As an example, we have 1,800 construction companies on our platform for a, certain, for a single certain use case. I haven't met all of them, uh, we, they, they can sign on online, uh, but I did meet at least 100 of those companies. 
direct competitors of each other building the, exactly the same buildings have a different way of working. This is a family business, this is not. You have to be able to adapt to how they work. And if you can do that, obviously never 100%, but very, very much. If you can do that, you win it. Because the second thing then is they don't have just one problem. They, they come to you with, or, or at some point they, they add, ah, this is what we'd like to do. Yeah, a good example is fleet management. Fantastic, you know everything about your fleet and driver statistics and everything. Do you know if the garage door is closed or what the energy consumption in your building is? No, you don't. You have to go and get another platform and another and another and then link them up. And that's really where we, we can. We, we, we can build um, the entire solution. Yeah, nice. And then if we then, so you must talk to a lot of people who are beginning to use IoT for the first time, yeah. whether that's integrated into a bigger uh, solution and it's just part of it, or they are digitizing or want data to drive a certain decision. What advice do you have for those companies who are getting started? And what are the key things to look out for or, or the key things to consider? This is a very good question, and I'm not sure if I do have the answer, um, because it is a jungle out there. Everybody is, there's so much communication about it. Um, um, uh, often when we get to companies, they have already made a sort of conclusion because they read something somewhere, but it's not really correct. Um, I remember in the, in, in, uh, a couple of years ago when it was about nationwide coverage. Uh, yeah, here it is. Look, nationwide. No. No, if you have a large antenna, yeah, but that, this tracker here with the small antenna in it does, does not even get any coverage or, or any con connectivity. So it's, um, it is um, very, very difficult. Um, we're very pragmatic. Um, I would say, uh, normally, if budgets are there, um, get some sort of consultant in that knows about this to help you identify your problem before you go out there. Because if you, without any experience, have to go into this market and do a selection on hardware, do a selection on connectivity. There's LoRaWAN versus NB-IoT versus Wi-Fi versus BLE. Um, if you're an IT and radio engineer uh, and you have radio engineering um, uh, skills within your company, you can make a good decision. But about 95% of the companies don't have that. So where do they need to go then? And then you, you... So ideally, you would... Coaching would be good. Um, on the other hand, we do part of that because there is no coaching there. Um, we, we don't want to, well, we do, we want to have our, our customer and we, we want them to be, to be successful. But what, what we often do is we train the system integrators into the common problems, but also into the knowledge of what worked and what did not work in markets. So um, something that's really interesting is the LoRa Alliance, for example, um, they, cause they, you, you can get a sort of controlled and it's a it's a non-profit organization you can get some sort of controlled information and at least a little bit of a, a balance information um, but there's not that many out there so um, I, I don't know if this is well what, what my tip would be um, unfortunately it is a jungle at the moment we need some sort of maturity of this market it's not mature yet uh, it will be in a couple of years um, and reach out to maybe even even colleagues or partners that have done it and uh, and, and please learn from their learnings uh, it's uh, it's much more interesting than lose your time on learning it yourself yeah and then um and then if we kind of go a bit more into the kind of human aspect so i liked kind of what you talked about on your website again or your leadership style which was all about um you know a lot about the people as well um, again, what kind of um, people or approaches or kind of working style do you need in an industry that's in its um, current state of evolution, shall we say? Yeah, because it is a premature market, the, your customer or your client or the end user cannot even make his own briefing. He thinks this is what he need, needs, but he, his knowledge is very, very uh, limited. Um, um, and is he capable of really pinpointing or identifying his exact problem? Uh, um, usually the, you start with that. Um, uh, one example was a, uh, a city that wanted to do waste management, wanted to um, do the depth level of 4,000 bins. Um, after three meetings, we learned that the reason for that, that, that was my first question, the reason for that was because they had a subcontractor that was meant to empty it. And they wanted to see if they did that every day. 
Well, a tilting sensor tells you whether the door is open or not, it's being, because you had to open the door to do that. So um, the device was, was one third of the price, but the city didn't know that something like that could exist. So, so the, um, the being pragmatic, and, and uh, the, the, the skills, and uh, as I said, uh, the, the, the people part, uh, it's the same within the company as well. All our developers pick up the phone. Sorry, you need to know who you're developing for. Uh, at least once or twice a year out there, go and I don't know, swap batteries or something. Even if it's normally a system integrator, but you need to feel what they feel. You need to understand what this is, this process, because it is pretty much everybody's still searching and, and looking for what is it now? How are we going to monetize this? Um, so, so you need to be very, very hands-on, um, uh, horizontal uh, structure as well, not a, not a vertical structure as in go do this and that. Um, um, uh, but that gives you the real feeling and it makes it tangible um, and then you can develop a solution for it and then you can understand what it's saying. Okay, cool. And then if I kind of take another kind of side step and look at it again from a different angle. Um, so success means lots of different things to lots of different people but you are um a person you are also the ceo and you're also the founder of this um company so what does success mean to you yeah my um my answer um because that question you you uh, sent um, uh, before this uh, the answer there is uh, customer satisfaction it's the only thing at the end of the day, somebody is paying for this and everybody does business because they want to earn money and they want to uh, be successful. You're only going to be successful if somebody wants to pay for your services and you only will pay for something if you're happy with it. So customer satisfaction is the very first thing. It's a basic. It's that's where it starts. There's, there's nothing else. There's nothing below that. There's nothing else. Um, now, who's that customer? In our case, it's a reseller. And then obviously he has an end customer. So we help that as business development. We help make sure that the end customer is happy as well. But, but who is that customer? Uh, um, um, there's, there's various ways indeed again, but it is that satisfaction makes you successful. That's, and then gives you obviously yeah, some taps on the shoulders as well. It doesn't always have to be money. Yeah, yeah. yeah satisfaction can come in, and success can be in, in multiple. And again, holistic thinking um, yeah. that helps a lot. Okay, we do have time for me to ask then specifically um, about then we're right in the middle or in some countries, I hopefully coming to towards the end of the um, COVID or um, Corona pandemic. Um, for you, um, because of where you are in the industry and the solutions um, and access to market that you have, and um, my understanding is that you've been able to help um, with some of those solutions by pivoting or, or creating. Um, do you want to just talk about that just for a couple of minutes? Yeah, yeah so, so um, uh, obviously everybody um, um, had a sort of impact from COVID, uh, also on business-wise. Um, we closed even a week before the government in Belgium said that we had to close. Uh, so everybody started working from home and we closed the office. I personally stayed in, in the office, uh, but we saw projects. Uh, our customers could not do their meetings with their customers. So, so we saw a project going, going down. Um, that was one perspective. And the other one is, um, well, we have a technology to do something really fast, enterprise level. So what could we potentially do to help this? And uh, the very first application concept we um, uh, designed and built, we built in three days, uh, was um, um, quarantine tracking because people had to go in quarantine and uh, stay there for 14 days, for example, they weren't respecting the rules and they were spreading the virus. They went out and bought some bread at the bakery anyway, and they shouldn't. Uh, and there's so many, uh, you know, so many parties and I don't know, barbecues in each other's gardens and they just shouldn't. So um, that was the first thing we did. Then a government heard about this and asked us, could you make that, um, that contact tracing app right, on your smartphone that the entire population of, of the country could do? And we could. Um, and um, we were then involved in writing white, white, pa uh, white papers for the task forces as well, as in how should you do this, talk to the ministers and the senators um, uh, and help them. Um, but we immediately also made a third solution, which is the private proximity. Why? Because everybody's going to object, uh, object against using personal data. And this, is, uh, again, it's proven right because it was all over the news. Now, um, that one, that third one, has been extremely successful. And so there's a, there's, a, there's a couple of reasons why it's successful. First of all, um, 
It is dedicated hardware. So it's a tracker, you wear it. Um, again, we're agnostic, so we work with multiple trackers. Not one solution, uh, sorry, not one product, your solution. And this one works good for that one, that one for that one. Um, because if you do it with smartphones, and then Apple and Google later on decided to start working together, because even their, the, the way they, they treat uh, BLE information is different, uh, or signals. Uh, but still, um, I could have a smartphone that's five years old with a very different antenna than you would have. That would mean that if you and I would be standing in front of each other, I could record you being close and you could not record me being close. Yeah. Your data is not correct. If, if, if you don't have, have good data, there's no project. You, can, you cannot do anything. You lose so much more time on the rest. So um, we came up and we started talking to a couple of device makers asking, um, could you change your firmware to this and that and that functionality? We're not firmware developers. Um, so that we can do this contact tracing. Um, and then we built the application in about five days. Um, and it's... it's we already had partners um, and it, it gave us a lot of um, um, good feedback. First of all, it was a solution. Secondly, it was easy to sell. Thirdly, we could prove to our partners, the resellers, that we do what we say. We can build an application, an enterprise solution in five days. Um, and it's gone in request now at the moment, after uh, six weeks, we have three million devices in request. Oh. Um, a request. Eh? Um, we have an order for 200,000, uh, a signed order for 200,000 already. In any normal IoT project where you do, I don't know, parking in a city, it would take you half a year to do the proof of concept with 80 devices, um, then the next tender, um, um, then say it's for 10,000 devices, you need to drill all those holes, do all the deployment. It takes you one or one and a half years. Now we do it in six weeks to, to get an order big, 10 times bigger than what a normal smart city parking solution, for example, is. So it's been absolutely crazy um very fortunate um that we can help um and um, um we have actually helped uh, uh, companies already very much and then the good thing again is that this is one of the 108 solutions and we had 107 six weeks ago so um once you're in there we can help the rest as well with the same interface we're replacing access control systems now yeah you have a tracker okay so we know where we are we can open the door um, 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 what about occupancy? What about um, uh, I don't know other patterns? What about um, sanitation? Um, uh, have you washed your hands? Uh, um, is there enough water? What about the soap dispenser? Uh, everything we, we can do it anyway. So it's been absolutely fortunate for us, um, but also super happy that we could help. We could really help start factories up again. We could help the economy start up again. We could, we could uh, isolate problems so that um, um, if uh, this area needs to be disinfected, the rest of the company can still work. Just don't go there now. And uh, half an hour later, when the cleaning personnel have passed by, then you can, you can open up again. It's been really that process again. It's been super, super all lots of taps on the shoulders we love it we we, we really have helped people and that's a that's a rewarding yeah well, well done i think that's um really nice Thank um, you. i'm gonna just um finish there because i think that is a really nice way to finish so thank you very much super thank you as well